Hi everyone, David Peterson here. I'm in my studio and I want to share another mouse guard model with you. Uh, fans have been very interested in the models that I make that help me visualize and illustrate the world of mouse guard. And today's model is one of the uh, more complex ones uh, in some regards. It is a ship of shell and timber scrap. Now, in the Black Axe series, there is a point where the mice are um, across the sea, across any map that any mouse has produced, and, uh, and their ship has been destroyed in that process. Now, to come back home, they have to make their own ship. Um, I knew that I was going to be drawing this ship from several angles, as well as showing it be constructed, so I had to have a good idea of what it looked like uh, inside and out and how it was built. So I went about building a model. Um, when thinking about these kind of like junk ships and, and salvage materials, um, one of the first things that came to mind was having a turtle shell as the hull. Um, so for the purposes of my model, the first thing that I did was to build a turtle shell. Uh, now this is all made out of Bristol board. Um, I looked and referenced at turtle, real turtle shells um, and I made marks and drawings with uh, a Sharpie marker and I would make cuts and folds and bend and then I'd use a lot of hot melt, hot melt glue on the inside. I don't know if that's showing up on the, on the film very much. There you go. Um, but those were ways of helping to reinforce it and give it shape and force it to take a curve. Um, it was a lot of trial and error and, and gluing things and making snips and then re-gluing things until I had this nice little turtle shell shape um, with the details on it. Now the next step was to make it into a boat. Um, and I had reservations. I was so proud of this piece that I didn't want to start gluing other stuff to it. So when I found it, went out in my yard and found a stick that would be a good mast and I had made a sail out of some scrap material and, and spare pieces of basswood, it's, it's kind of keeping that that shape because I have a piece of florist wire um, kind of fished through it at the top so that it uh, it holds that that look like there's wind blowing in it as we speak. Um, the deck was made of a sheet of basswood that I've drawn lines on it so that it has planks um, and I made a way that it just slides in to the turtle shell um, and I like I said I did that because I was nervous about gluing anything to this this paper craft that I had made and spent so much time on that I liked and I knew that if I glued something and it didn't work and I had to rip it off the turtle shell would probably break before anything else would so uh, I, I made that part slide in. Now this could have been the boat all on its own um, but it felt like it was too unsteady. There was nothing that would make it want to stay up. Um, uh, real boats have something like a keel to help them or the the, the the hull of the ship is much bigger, so that when when the the sail blows, the whole thing doesn't wouldn't just blow over or even just roll over on its own weight. Um, but instead of doing a keel, I thought of doing it more like a catamaran and have having uh, outrigger pontoons each side. So again, I went out into my yard and found some found some pieces of uh, some sticks that had blown blown off of a, a, a tree a nearby tree, and I trimmed them down. Um, out of basswood, I made uh, a rudder system. Um, I actually drilled holes through the through the natural wood, um, so I could I could have these uh, these rudders kind of work in tandem. That was so that when I was drawing it over and over, and I had to draw them uh, turning or or changing position, um, I could see how all that that mechanical rigging would work. Uh, as it as it turned this way or turned that way and, and how much you could see of one rudder or the other depending on on what position uh, this bottom piece is just here as a uh, as a support across the bottom but I lashed the uh, I lashed the main supports that hold the turtle shell on um, all basswood again I lashed it with twine and then I made just a little rubber band hook that holds the shell uh, in place on the back here I'll once I get it connected, I'll get it to camera. There you go. That way I could show the characters in this boat on their long journey. It's about half an issue, maybe a little less, maybe about a third of an issue, uh, that the main characters are in this boat uh, or, or building this boat. 
And so having a thorough knowledge of how it was built, um, what angles looked cool, if I wanted to have a character walking up the mast or, or hanging off of the back, or is there room down uh, in this, this cavity below below this decking, this open space that I left. Is that a place that a mouse could hang out? Is that the, where their storage is? Is that where they've, they've collected food and uh, berries and nuts and things like that? Um, and, and just how, how this whole thing would work, how, how it would look. Um, if I had just had to sit down and try to draw a boat that was made of junk, I don't know that I would have come up with something as cool as when I actually got my hands in there and started building something. Um, seeing the relationships between things I think is really important, especially in the 3D environment. Um, the width of something versus the height of something. This, this could have been any scale. I could have made a much bigger shell or a smaller, scale, smaller shell. But the height of the mast, the curve of it, the size of the sail, all of those things I made visually based on the size of the shell. And the same for the outriggers and, and, uh, and the rudders and everything. Um, I visually wanted this thing to look cool, and I think those decisions are a lot of times easier when you're actually just making it by the seat of your pants rather than uh, having a lot of plans uh, and, and, and detailed drawings in advance. But this model came uh, in very handy uh, for me during the, uh, the production of the fifth chapter of The Black Axe. And uh, I don't know that I'll ever use it again. I, I don't know that the ship survived long after that chapter. Um, it's not shown what happens to it afterwards, but um, since it was made out of temporary materials, I, I don't know that it would, it would be uh, in the Mouse Guard universe too much longer than, than that, uh, that one voyage. But it's, it's a cool thing to have around. Um, and if I ever want to show a flashback scene, I can. Um, if I ever want to have it turn up again, I can. Um, and until then, it's just a really cool thing to have on my shelf um, and, and help remind me of the aesthetics of what mouse guard are. So, thanks for watching, everyone.